everyone, my name is Bethany and I'm an educator with Singer Sewing Company and today in this tutorial I'm going to teach you three different ways to embellish your next project. So three different sewing techniques. In this tutorial you're going to learn how to applique, free motion, and embroider. And we're going to do all three techniques on this machine right here behind me, which is the Singer Legacy SE300, which is an embroidery and sewing machine. This machine is available over on Singer.com. For this tutorial, you'll see that I'm going to use the same fabric and thread for all three techniques, so you can really compare the differences in all three. Now I'm going to show you real quick what all three techniques look like in case you might not be familiar with some of them, and then we can dive into the step-by-step -step instructions on how to do each technique. The first technique is applique. This is an applique. An applique is basically the process of attaching fabric to another fabric, like your project, and then uh, stitching all the way around it. Most commonly, we use a satin stitch, but you don't always have to. You could use a decorative stitch, a wider zigzag stitch. You could use a single stitch around a flower that's very detailed like this. Um, I even use the eyelet stitches to do the center of the bead, which we will talk about in the tutorial. So this is an applique in a really fun way to add some embellishment to a project. The next technique is free motion. Now you've probably heard of free motion when it comes to quilting, but today I'm going to teach you how to do free motion sewing and write a word. How fun is that? So basically I am just writing the word on the fabric with a fabric marker and then I'm following that outline with my stitches. This is a great way to add some flair to a project or even just a simple word to a collar or cuff. The final technique that I'm going to show you today is embroidery. We're going to do a very basic font embroidery with the same word again, bloom, and I'm going to walk you through the steps of how to set up your embroidery machine, how to hoop your fabric, and how to stitch this out. Now before we get started on the machine, I want to let you know that there is a link in the description that has a full step-by-step -step written tutorial as well. I highly recommend downloading that tutorial, taking some notes as we go along through this video. So that way you can reference it when you do decide to apply one of these sewing techniques to your next project. The full tutorial that has all of the steps for today's lesson also includes information that's very important for preparing your materials for these sewing techniques. Some of those things that you need to know is the type of stabilizer to use and the type of thread to use and how to bond your applique pieces to your fabric before stitching around the applique. So things like tearaway stabilizer are very important. A double-sided fusible adhesive to attach your letters and then using the right rayon thread for your satin stitch on your applique and these other embroidery and free motion designs. So be sure to use that link in the description to get that full detailed tutorial and make sure you're setting yourself up for success when practicing these techniques. I don't know about you, but I'm ready to get sewing. So let's head over to the machine and we're going to start with applique. First we need to attach the clear open toe decorative foot to the sewing machine. Next we want to select the stitches and we're going to select a zigzag stitch. We're going to change our stitch length to as low as the machine will go. Every machine varies just a little bit. We're going to leave our stitch length at 5. You'll see here that I have the pretty pink rayon thread already in my machine. And I also have rayon thread in my bobbin and I have a white rayon thread in the bobbin because it will not show on the front. Next I'm going to slide the fabric up under the foot and line it up so that the fabric of the letter B is centered between the open toe foot. I find it easiest to keep the design to the left. That's why I'm starting at the bottom of the letter B, upside down. I'm going to do a few stitches and then back stitch and then keep going. Now you'll notice that sewing a satin stitch around the applique designs is not a very fast process. You definitely want to take your time as you go around your applique pieces. Now for the sake of time, I am going to speed this video up a little bit from time to time. And I want to point out here that I'm keeping the fabric of the letter B centered between my two open toe of my foot. Um, and as you see, I'm stopping 
as I go around this curve, leaving my needle down and pivoting my fabric as I lift my foot and then lower it back down to keep going. You're gonna have to do this a few times as you go around corners and curves, and you wanna just practice this technique uh, until you kind of get it where you really feel comfortable sewing around these kind of shapes. When you're first starting with applique, I recommend starting with a simple shape like a square, and then work your way up to a circle, and then start doing fun shapes and letters. There you go. Now you're going to continue to sew the same satin stitch around the letter L and the letter M, but look how great that B turned out. Now for the flowers, it's going to be hard to do that thick bold satin stitch around these tiny little petals. So you don't always have to do that kind of stitch to applique. Here I'm showing you how I'm doing a simple straight stitch around the edge of the petals and the, and the flower uh, as I work my way around, just stopping and pivoting around the fabric. You can also use other fun decorative stitches to applique around your shapes and letters. Next I'm going to show you where the eyelet stitch is on the machine, which is stitch number 31 for this Legacy SE300. And it shows you the stitch right here on the screen. You can adjust the stitch width and the stitch length to increase or decrease the size of the eyelet. You're going to need a pretty good size circle for the center of the flowers and the center of the letter B's and for those tiny little holes. I find doing this eyelet stitch is much easier than trying to do the satin stitch all the way around. Now here I am stitching out the eyelet. You'll see that the first time around it's not very bold and I want it to look like my satin stitch around my letters. So I actually did the eyelet stitch three times all the way around the center to fill it in completely. And I think it's what turned it out really well. I will tell you I did practice this away from my applique on a scrap piece of fabric before I did it on the applique to make sure I had the right size and settings. And here is the letter B. Let's now set up our machine to do free motion. So we're going to remove that open toe foot and next we're going to attach the embroidery foot. You can also use a free motion darning foot. But in order to attach a free motion darning foot or embroidery foot, we do need to remove the ankle of the, on the machine. Simply unscrew it and set it aside. I recommend putting it in your accessory tray so you do not lose it. Take out the screw and slide the embroidery foot or darning foot onto the presser bar here. You want to make sure that the top part of that foot that has the little bar that comes out the front is going up over this post right here. Next, you're going to plop, pop it into place and then use that same screw to attach it to the presser bar. You want to make sure it's secured in place and sometimes it helps to lower the presser bar to get the foot on there securely. You definitely want to make sure that you use a screwdriver to ensure that this is nice and tight because this foot is going to move around quite a bit. On the back of your machine, we are going to remove the removable extension table that holds the accessory tray and you will find a drop feed lever. You're going to slide this lever over to lower the feed dogs. You'll see the feed dogs lower on that needle plate. We want to keep the feed dogs down and inactive. When we're done with that, we can reattach that extension table. Next, we're going to set our machine to a zigzag stitch again. This time, the stitch length doesn't matter because it's free motion. What matters is the stitch width, which I'm going to leave at five, but you can really play around with this and get a lot of different looks adjusting the stitch width. You don't even have to use a zigzag stitch. You could use a straight stitch and other stitches with free motion. Here you'll see that I used a fabric pin to write the word bloom on the front of my fabric and I have a tearaway stabilizer on the back. I'm going to slide my fabric up under my foot and I like to start at the beginning of the letter B. I find it easiest to work left to right when writing a font with free motion stitches. Next you're going to want to hold your top thread, drop the needle, bring it back up and gently pull that top thread to bring the bobbin thread to the top. Once you have both threads to the top, you're going to lower your foot 
and you're going to start your stitches. Just do a few stitches to get going and to secure your thread. Once you've done a few stitches, you can stop and trim those thread tails so they are out of the way. Now we're off to the races. This zigzag stitch is going to go back and forth and we're going to follow our line, our word that we wrote. Now it's going to take some getting used to with free motion. Some things I want to point out here while you watch me do this in real time is that the stitch width for the zigzag stitch cannot be wider than the opening in your embroidery or darning foot. So you wanna make sure that you are setting your stitch to an appropriate width for your foot. They're not all the same width. And then you wanna see that I am going back and forth over the same area a few times um, to really fill it in and make it nice and bold. This is a personal preference of mine. You do not have to do this. You can go over the whole thing once and then do it again until you get the thickness. I find it easier to break it up into smaller sections. The other thing I want to point out is that I am only moving the fabric forward and backwards and left to right. You'll notice while watching me do this that I am not turning and rotating the fabric. It's very important that we um, keep our fabric along that horizon line, meaning forward, backwards, left to right, those types of movements. There should be no rotation. That's when it gets really messy and you no longer have control of your free motion. One of the things I love most about free motion is that you do have control over a lot of aspects of the sewing. So the feed dogs are down. There is nothing moving the fabric under the needle. You are moving it with your hand. So you're gonna have both hands placed on top of the fabric and gently slide it around following your outline. The other thing that you have control over is the speed that you move your fabric and the speed that you set you sew your stitches. So that's your foot control. One way to help get, not get away with your stitches and go too fast is to lower the speed control on your sewing machine. That way if you accidentally hit the foot a little too hard, it doesn't go too fast and it doesn't get uh, off the line. Now I wanna point out as I'm going around this curve of the V, I am not turning the fabric with the curve. I am just sliding it so that it goes right under the foot. Again, those ho that horizon line is so important. So sometimes when you do that, the thickness of those stitches along that line may adjust a little bit, almost like calligraphy. It feels like you're writing calligraphy with stitches and it's so beautiful. And I love that every time I do a free motion design like this, no two really look the same and it makes a fun personalized uh, t stitch technique. As we continue to watch me stitch this out in real time, I want you to know that when I first started doing free motion sewing, it did not look this good the first time I did it. It does take some practice to get the technique and get comfortable with moving the fabric and controlling your speed at the same time. But once you get the hang of it, it is so much fun. So now I'm gonna speed up the video. I'm gonna stitch out the rest of the word bloom in fast motion, and you can watch how my fabric is moving as I stitch. So I have to show you, when I finished stitching out the word bloom, my bobbin was completely empty at the perfect moment. When does that ever happen? Anyways, be sure you have a full bobbin and look how good that turned out. Now I'm just gonna go press my marks away and you won't even see them anymore and it's all done. 
For our final technique, we're gonna do embroidery. This is the embroidery hoop I'm using, and to open in the hoop, you're gonna loosen the screw and lift the little bar there, and it's gonna come apart in two pieces, an inner piece and an outer piece. The inner piece we're gonna set off to the side. We're gonna leave the outer piece laying flat on our table, and I'm gonna take my white fabric with my stabilizer on the back side, and I'm gonna put it stabilizer side down, so wrong side down, and my right side up, completely covering the outside part of the hoop making sure it's covered completely. Then I'm gonna take my inside hoop piece and I wanna point out here, I'm using the 260 by 150 hoop. This hoop does come with the Legacy SE300 sewing and embroidery machine. I'm gonna take that inside hoop piece and I'm gonna find my outside hoop piece under the fabric and I'm gonna line up the corners and sandwich them together. I want that fabric to get nice and taut in between the two pieces. You'll see that the fabric kind of folds up around the edges and comes up out. I'm gonna make sure those corners are nice and level and I'm gonna lower or close that clamp there. Now if this clamp will not close because it's too tight because we added that fabric, you can adjust the screw a little bit. You do not wanna force it too hard. And now our fabric is nice and tight in the center of our embroidery hoop. And I've made sure that all of my corners are nice and level and flat with the two pieces. And we're ready to attach our embroidery hoop. Before we can attach the embroidery hoop, we need to remove that extension table again. This time we're gonna set it off to the side because we need to attach the embroidery arm to the machine. This is a bigger attachment and you wanna make sure you have plenty of clearance for that arm to move around as we embroider. Next, I'm going to follow the steps on the machine to attach the hoop. So you want to gently slide the hoop up under the foot, clearing the needle and the foot. On the left hand side, there is a bar that slides into the embroidery arm. You'll see it here. And I want to slide this in until it clicks into place. Right there. See? Now it is secure to my embroidery arm and I'm going to click the check mark. Now it's going to, the machine's gonna calibrate and determine what hoop I just attached. Next, we're gonna click on the letters and we're going to type out the word bloom. You can choose any font you want. Once you get the word bloom typed out, click the check, the arm is gonna move around a little more and now we have all of the settings to really customize this embroidery. All of these settings across the bottom you can play with and move around and adjust like the size. You wanna make sure you have the right hoop size as well which is listed right here. And then you can also uh, move the position of your embroidery design as well. And this will tell you how many stitches are in the design and how many different steps or colors. Here you'll see that I'm going to increase my embroidery design up to 20% bigger than it is originally set at. Once I'm done, I'm going to lower the speed of my machine just to be safe and I am going to drop my foot down and I'm going to use my hand wheel to lower the needle one and back up one full stitch rotation and gently pull that top thread to bring the bobbin thread to the top just like we did for the free motion. Once you have both threads to the top, lower the foot and hit play. It's going to move around a little bit and then start its first stitches. Once it's done a few stitches, the machine's gonna stop again and ask you to trim your threads so that they're out of the way. Once you've trimmed your threads, you can click the check mark. After you've trimmed your threads and click the check mark, lower the foot and hit play, and now we're off to the races. Here you'll see the machine is starting to stitch out the first letter, which is B, because again, we're using the same word bloom. 
I don't know about you, but I love watching an embroidery machine work its magic. It is so fun to watch it make these perfect aligned stitches and it just looks flawless every single time. So now I'm gonna speed up the video a little bit. It's gonna go really fast, but I want you to be able to watch it stitch out the entire word bloom. And what I wanna point out is at the end of a letter, of every single letter, it's going to give you a few extra stitches and then it's gonna stop and ask you to trim your threads and then you're gonna hit play again to start the next letter. The reason it stops is this gives you an opportunity to change threads so each letter could be a different color. For this tutorial, I'm keeping it all the same color, but again, it stops between each letter so you can change your thread color. Now that the design is done being stitched out, we're gonna lift our foot and time to remove our hoop. This little button right here is what you wanna press down to release the hoop from the embroidery arm. You wanna make sure you have plenty of clearance for your hoop on the foot. If you don't, don't forget to lift that extra lift on the foot to get it out safely. And look how great this turned out. I love it. Now we want to remove our design from our hoop. So we're going to release that lever on the back with the spring, and we're going to separate the two pieces. Sometimes you need to loosen that screw a little bit to relax the spring as well. So we're gonna set the hoop pieces aside, and now we have our beautiful embroidered design, and we can go put this as a part of our project if we want to. I think it turned out great, and I hope you like it. Well, there you have it. We just learned three new sewing techniques to embellish your next project. I cannot wait to see what you create. So be sure to use the hashtag singer sewing so we can see your finished projects when you share them online with your friends. Also take a minute to like this video and leave us a comment with what you learned from this tutorial. Be sure to share this tutorial with your other sewing friends so they can learn it as well. And until I see you again, happy sewing.